What makes a good mathematician? Remember long ago someone told me, a good mathematician is someone who understands what they read, who understands what the, lecture, what the professor teaches, who can read a book and understand the mathematical, the, the writing, the notation, the master of bookkeeping. But what makes a great mathematician? You not only understand it, but you can derive the equations. You can see a problem and you can explain how to prove it without referring to a book. And also, you, not only that, but you can have to be able to explain it to people around you, your peers, people who have no experience in mathematics. And that's why I'm here today, dressed up as the math ninja. Because I want to get better at understanding and being able to visually, uh, to um, explain the mathematics and to understand or be able to derive it on the spot. I hope that later on this year, I'll be able to post YouTube videos proving essential proofs that everyone should know. See, as a mathematician, there's, in order to become a great mathematician, you have to be able to prove all the essential results of this century. Some things that you have to know, for example, Euler's identity, uh, the how to prove the trigonometric identities, the implicit function theorem, things like that. But I want to just start off with being able to recite, or put in my own words, my professor's lectures. So this will be a lecture based on real analysis, the fundamental competence analysis, Math 171, which is taught by Richard Schoen. Well, another reason why I'm wearing this ninja uh, apparel is not only to, I guess, I feel, uh, it feels better teaching well, dressed up as a ninja. My kids, well, I don't have kids, but when I was a camp counselor, they always liked the idea of Chuck Norris and ninjas. So, gives me an excuse to dress up. Second reason, I don't know how legal it is to post lectures belonging to someone else on YouTube. So I don't want to get in trouble. So, without further ado, let us begin. Oh, by the way, uh, I couldn't afford a whiteboard. You see, all the students are poor, especially the grad students. But I'm not a grad student, but I'm still poor. So instead of a whiteboard, I just took a top of a lid and just decided to make it into one. So analysis. Well, if you've done algebra in the past, then you would know that there is something called a field. And God created the integers. But we created everything else from that. So one of the things we created were the rational numbers. And we're going to assume all the, the, the uh, field properties of the rational numbers. If you remember, a rational number, x in the set, I wonder if you can say it correctly, x in the set of the rationals can be expressed as x and m comma n in the set of z such that x equals m over n and m and n are um, co-prime meaning they share no common factors now we should all know that assume everything about it that we should know in other words you should assume the associative properties the uh, commutativity, the, the field properties, the multiplication axioms, and the addition axioms. You should know that. How, now, there's a problem with the rationals. And that problem is that it's incomplete. What, in, what completeness means is that every bounded sequence, <coughs> every bounded sequence that's monotonically increasing should converge should converge to a number, to a, an element 
in the rationals. Now, that's a problem. We can design easily a sequence such that, for example, all numbers x squared that converges to x squared equal 2. We can design a sequence that does this. And you know the square root of 2 is not in the rational numbers. So, a straightforward definition of convergence. So every sequence to be, com to be complete must converge to an element in that set. So, a strict definition for any sequence xn where xn is in the set of the rationals, this will mean that, wait, can you see this? I'll move this a little bit closer. Oh, by the way, if I make any errors, or if I do anything wrong, whether my proofs can be simplified or, correct, or, or corrected, please do not hesitate to email me or to post a YouTube comment. Well, I won't be long that, but send a YouTube message and I will fix it. Or, I, or because I am interested in learning, because I, I'm still undergraduate. Uh, I, I have not mastered or even close to understanding purely abstract mathematics. So, Kadeen's definition. We call it, um, we say that the sequence xn, xn, each element in the set of q, converges if after some point n, if there exists for, actually, for any error, epsilon greater than zero, and epsilon, we can say it's in the rationals, because we don't know about the reals yet. We're building the reals from the rationals. For any epsilon greater than zero, there exists an n, such that every point n after this n, the, limp, the bound x minus xn minus x going to be less than epsilon. We should say it converges to x. So that means after a point, after a period, after an integer n in the sequence, everything should be, con very, should be within an epsilon neighborhood of x. So in other words, simple example, the real number line, you can have things going wacky, wacky, but eventually, after a point n, everything in epsilon of x, all the sequence, the remainder of the sequence will, will be in an epsilon neighborhood of x. I hope you can really read this. If not, I'll try to find a better way. Uh, let's see. So, next thing, convergence. So not every rational number converges to an element in the rationals. So what do we do? Well, let's define something called a Cauchy sequence. And we're going to keep this in just rationals and distance in the rationals. We can actually define Cauchy sequences in more abstract terms. That's an interesting word, abstract. You know, a lot of things, they become more difficult after you put the word abstract before it. For example, algebra is easy. Abstract algebra is hard. Eigenvectors are easy. Generalized eigenvectors are hard. Fourier transform, easy. Generalized Fourier transform, hard. So whenever anyone puts the word abstract or generalized before, it becomes a thousand times harder. And a, a lot more interesting. But let's just leave that for another conversation. So, let us define a Cauchy sequence. So, definition. A sequence, xn, is Cauchy if for any epsilon 